Masai Ujiri hosted a press conference today following the Pascal Siakam blockbuster trade, and he had a lot to say, revealing that more moves are likely coming for this Toronto Raptors team, and discussed Christian Coloco getting waived, reasons behind Pascal Siakam getting dealt, and a bunch of different topics that are of interest to Toronto Raptors fans. So we're going to cover it all here in this video. So before we dive into it, again, over 57% of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel, so it would mean the world to me if you guys could hit that subscribe button. If you want to stay up to date with every Everything regarding this Toronto Raptors team and the Raptors are in a weird spot right now it's nice that Masai Ujiri came out after trading OG after trading Pascal Siakam and sort of gave us some insight into the state of where he's at of the state of the franchise and the state of everything that's going on so basically we can dive in the first part which is probably the most intriguing to a lot of Toronto Raptors fans it's you know, the process of trading Pascal Siakam, and are there more moves to come? Well, basically, Masai on what they got for OG and Pascal now versus earlier, well, when I measure what we have now and what was available then, it pretty much balances out. And he says in addition to internal growth and giving young players the space needed to expand their games, they want to add more shooting. Definitely, he could see more trades by February 8th. Headlines, flexibility once again. So this was a common theme throughout Masai Ujiri's press conference, discussed how you know, he brought in these trades. He made these deals, obviously, quickly, RJ, Scotty, part of the future, part of the core. You know, they're going to be young pieces there developing into the future for the Toronto Raptors team. But dealing away Pascal, bringing in some draft capital, bringing in some pieces, he likes the idea of having flexibility for this Toronto Raptors roster going forward. And he had a lot to say in regards to patience for this team, saying Masai taking rebuild, reset, whatever it is, there will need to be some patience. I am patient, maybe to a fault. I was patient with this, last, this team last year because I believed in them. But now we have to look into the future. And he adds that I think I'm going to take patience. I'm I think it's going to take some patience. Masai reiterates the Raptors fan base. This will take patience on Bruce Brown, and we'll talk about Bruce Brown after. But basically, he looks at this team and says, hey, one, they're young, they're developing. We're going to see what we have in this group and not commit to any specific sort of rosters, max contracts, or anything along those lines. That's why OG and Pascal were dealt, and we'll get into Gary Trent Jr. essentially after this. But basically, Masai Ujiri is looking at this team. He used rebuild, he said retool, reshape, you know, all these types of language indicating that he's not done sort of tinkering with this roster and this flexibility, the sort of openness he had right now in this moment said, hey, I think it was Doug Smith who directly asked, should we expect more trades ahead of this year's trade deadline, given the fact the roster does seem like it's in flux, seems like it's not a finished product here at this point, and not that it's going to be a finished product by the end of the trade deadline, but Masai Ujiri emphatically said that we can expect moves, we can expect stuff. That was the idea of having flexibility going into this year's trade deadline, getting the most value, most assets you can out of the OG and Pascal Siakam trades, but then also opening yourself up to potential opportunities. See what sort of uh, arises over the next three weeks because the landscape of the NBA just seems to always be shifting, you know, given different players' availabilities and things like that. So Masai Ujiri's looking to make more moves. He's looking to add some shooting to this roster, some young pieces that fit around Scotty Barnes and this sort of young core group he's been establishing through these OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam trades. And one other thing that I found really interesting from his presser is how he discussed sort of Scotty Barnes and how he wished, you know, given the fact Scotty Barnes last year, he said was a kind of a, a lateral year, you know, he didn't take a major leap from his rookie season. He wished he uh, sort of knew more or was expecting this lucrative jump from Scotty Barnes from year two to year three because probably this summer this roster would have been reconstructed or retooled to really fit what Scotty Barnes is able to do for this team given the fact that he has really taken that massive step up you know in his year three season so he said it's a learning experience it's nice for him to sort of figure out you know he's always learning he's always kind of figuring out how the NBA works and Scotty Barnes you know his development he, he learned a lot of lessons about developing young players from that sort of process so we're building around Scotty we have this young core group we have a lot of stuff going on and then one player even though moves are likely to be made ahead of this year's trade deadline obviously none as big as OG or Pascal given the fact those are two cornerstones and there's no world where uh, Scotty Barnes is going to end up getting dealt but Bruce Brown is now a player that all eyes are going to be on so basically again Bruce Brown was addressed and said on Bruce Brown, we sees him as one of the toughest players in the NBA, versatile and as a fit, a player they wanted not just as a piece in a deal. So basically, 
while I'm not sold, Bruce Brown is going to be on this team long term. His contract is very, very large. Now, there's a team option on it, so there's a lot of flexibility for Masai to sort of get off of it if he wants off his money or to deal him away. So there's value there, you know, in that contract, that team option that he had from the Indiana Pacers. Apparently, he's frustrated in Indiana, too. Maybe it's a whole own topic in a video. But Bruce Brown is a player that just logically makes sense from the video I just made a couple hours ago, right? Doesn't shoot a lot. Another 6'4 guy. Now, gets a lot of boards, plays defense, so it could be a fit. Again, as Masai, you Jerry said, very gritty, very tough player. But definitely a guy that would be highly touted from teams across the league that are looking to take that jump into championship contention. Or at least, you know, good teams trying to become great. The Nuggets, they acquired Bruce Brown last season, won a championship. He was a key piece to that sort of group. So, I mean, I think the Raptors could get some serious value from him. Now, the Raptors are also a team that... Don't want to tank. That's another thing Masai Ujiri basically said in this presser. He is not looking to bottom out, actively lose. Grange basically asked him directly, do you think it makes more sense given how the tra direction these trades went to sort of push for uh, having our lottery pick this year? And Masai Ujiri said, we'll see how it shakes out, but we are trying to win. We are trying to win games. Even though there's patience, there, even though it's a young group, we want good habits built in this Toronto Raptors locker room, not to look like the Detroit Pistons and go on crazy losing streaks. Now, he kind of left it open to say we might end up there anyways, obviously without Pascal Siakam, OG, and Anobi, two very talented pieces gone, but we've seen guys like quickly RJ Scotty step up. So, you know, I'm not sold. We're going to be losing a bunch of games. Now we'll see how the roster looks at the end of this year's trade deadline, but it's a, uh, it's, it's an interesting spot this organization is in. And then obviously we have the, the topic of Jakob Pertle, who Pertle uh, for a first, he says that Pertle for a first was a good trade. A starting caliber center for a first is a good deal uh, for them and for the future. That's a good value for us. But Hedges, maybe it was a mistake. I'm not going to cry over spilled milk. So, you know, that's a... <laughs> to double speak there, you know, to throw out there from Masai Ujiri. But I agree with what he's saying. Even though the Raptors might be young, might be rebuilding or whatever, one first round pick for a guy in Yakupertle, who's a legitimate starting center in the NBA, is like a good starting center, not a fringe sort of starter. He's an elite rim protector. You know, he can finish around the basket. Yes, he's not much of a lob threat. Yes, he's not a floor spacer, but he is a starting caliber quality center in the league. And no matter if it's, even if it's a lottery pick, again, you hope your lottery pick sort of end up to be a Yakka Pertle, right? That's sort of the, the, maybe not the dream, but it's like, okay, that's a cool selection if we took a draft selection and ended up becoming Pertle. So I get what he's saying there, but again, maybe it was a mistake given the fact that the Raptors might be bottoming out this year. Maybe they're young and things like that. Maybe he says as value wise and the way he was sort of talking, it almost like he pulled it back at times the way he was discussing them. Maybe Yaka Pertle could be on the market as well. And basically, you know, seeing the second part of this, Masai says Raptors will continue to move the ball well as uh, they have try at, are trying to add some shooting, you know, on trades before the February 8th trade deadline. Definitely, that's where why we have created this flexibility, either trades by then or to set things up for the draft. So, I mean, you got to expect moves to happen. He continuously talked about more trades potentially going down, more different deals. We know Chris Boucher has been touted by the Celtics. The Knicks want Bruce Brown. I'm sure there's a lot of guys on this roster, particularly Gary Trent Jr., who wasn't even brought up, wasn't even mentioned. I'm disappointed all the time about our reporters, the people that are in the sort of uh, scrums and stuff. No one ever addresses Masai Ujiri during these press conferences, never talking about Gary Trent Jr. Yes, he's having a down year. Yes, all this type of stuff. But he's also an unrestricted free agent, you know, and uh, the uncertainty of free agency is why Pascal and OG are sort of there. Obviously, no reporter's going to ask directly, are you trading uh, Gary Trent Jr.? But someone should ask Masai Ujiri, hey, is Gary Trent Jr. part of future plans for this team? Again, he looked insane in the last game against the Miami Heat, uh, but... He hasn't been that great this year. He hasn't been utilized a lot. Masai Ujiri just doesn't talk about him in press conferences. So, I don't know. I'd like to get some more details on Gary Trent Jr. But the last guy we will discuss, we will talk about, is Christian Coloco. Because we got some... It was shocking to me. You know, I uh, refrained from throwing that in a title for the for the, the waving. But it was, it was definitely a shock to me to see Christian Coloco wave. Because, again, he's a young piece that seemed like he was a part of the future. He fits exactly kind of what the Toronto Raptors need. An athletic sort of rim protector can catch is a lob threat out there in the paint. And he also was developing a jump shot. I mean, Christian Coloco is a really good basketball player. And, you know, for being a young center that's developing, that had an opportunity to be the backup center this year. Obviously, it wasn't uh, going to be revealed what the illness is, but 
the signing jury spoke out in terms of what was going on with uh, Christian Coloco and basically said, hey, it's in the NBA's hands right now. They believed in him. They really like him as a player. He feels really just bad and sad that things didn't work out with Christian Coloco. So that kind of writes off him potentially being with the 905 or anything like that. But, you know, it's just bad luck. He used that word directly, you know, with uh, Christian Coloco sort of, you know, his respiratory issue, whatever the heck it is, right? That seems like, you know, we're reading tea leaves or we're trying to read between the lines of what Masai Jerry is saying, but uh, the way it was phrased, again, no insider info, no like, oh, I'm hearing from the back rooms of the Toronto Raptors. From what I've heard, I'd be surprised if we see Christian Cloco play in the NBA again, or at least in the, the next couple of seasons. So wishing him the best, wishing the best for this Toronto Raptors team. Again, keep it locked to Raptors Digest. We'll keep you updated on all the latest updates regarding the squad. Anyways, subscribe to the channel. I'm signing out. Cheers.